This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Sean's off today driving the long wheelbase version of the new Grand Cherokee. We've got a little bit more about that later in the show, but first the big news. Tesla took the wraps off the new Model S Plaid last night. While the styling remains unchanged, it's loaded up with new technology and features, like a more powerful electric motor, a new heat pump and thermal system, which provides 30% better range in cold weather, and requires 50% less energy to heat the cabin in freezing conditions. It has a coefficient of drag of only 0.208, which Tesla claims is the best of any production car, and I sure do believe that. It's got a faster charging time, providing 187 miles of range in 15 minutes. The interior has more head and leg room, along with more space for second row passengers. The Plaid also features an updated entertainment system that Tesla says is on the same level as a PlayStation 5. Elon Musk says they're going to make 1,000 Plaids a week starting next quarter. Ford is up to 100,000 reservations for the electric F-150 Lightning. But just to show you the bandwidth that this truck platform offers, Ford also just shared more details about the updated Raptor. Its 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6 cranks out 450 horsepower at 5,850 RPM and 510 foot-pounds of torque at only 3,000 RPM. The new model has better low-end torque, has a maximum towing capacity of 8,200 pounds and a maximum payload of 1,400 pounds, and it has an EPA-estimated 500 miles of range. Ford's also taking an important step towards vertical integration for EV components. The electric motor that goes into the Maverick Hybrid is made at Ford's Sterling Heights plant in Michigan. It's the first time that Ford has made an electric motor in-house. Ward's intelligence reports it features magnets molded into the rotor instead of glued in. That allows the motor to spin faster. It uses hairpin wiring instead of round wiring. It's 20% lighter, and the motor puts out 98 kilowatts of power. That's around 131 horsepower. It also puts out 1,696 pound-feet. That's about 2,300 newton meters of torque. And the cycle time for manufacturing the motor is 75 seconds. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. The all-new long wheelbase version of the Jeep Grand Cherokee is rolling down the assembly line at the freshly renovated Mack assembly plant in Detroit. It took $1.6 billion to bring that plant up to today's vehicle manufacturing standards. That's because the original building went up around 1916. It later made the Dodge Viper and then V6 and V8 engines. But making SUVs is a lot different than making engines. So the whole plant was gutted, and because the roof was too low, they had to cut it, raise it, and resupport certain sections. It's also quite a bit smaller than typical plants, so Stellantis bought up a lot of the surrounding area and even shares a rail line with the nearby Jefferson plant. But the clean sheet allowed them to install a number of -of state-of-the-art technologies, like lasers measuring body specs, an indoor BSR, or buzz, squeak, and rattle test track. That eliminates noise and makes it easier to find sources for noise. And it also has a vehicle shaker using electronic servos instead of hydraulic ones. That's a lot quieter and requires less service. The plant is now making Jeep Grand Cherokee Ls on three shifts, five days a week. And next up, it's going to build the standard wheelbase Grand Cherokee and the 4XE models. Everyone who drives an electric car in winter weather knows that heated seats are a more efficient way to keep warm. 
Now a company called GenTherm is taking that a step forward. Phil Eiler, the CEO of GenTherm, was on AutoLine After Hours yesterday, and he talked about their system. Take a look. Compare that to an HVAC system, where really the goal of an HVAC system is to bring the entire cabin to a common temperature, for the most part. And uh, that takes huge amount of energy. If you can just do each passenger, you know, the average passenger count in most vehicles, if you average it all out, is like 1.25 or something like that. So think about all the excess energy it takes to heat and cool an entire cabin. It's dramatic. And uh, you know, if you look at the tests we've done, we actually did a, a project with General Motors uh, where we installed our system with them on the Chevy Bolt. And uh, they did their own independent testing. Actually showed in the cold weather test cycle, their testing, uh, almost a 70% improvement in energy consumption in the cold weather. Uh, so it's really remarkable. So you got happier passengers and you're adding range to the vehicle. And we're pretty excited about that. Boy, there's a ton of good information in that show. We also had Martin Fisher from ZF explaining how they're transitioning from being a traditional ICE supplier into a leader in ADAS and electrification. And you can catch that entire show on our website or our YouTube channel. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Volkswagen has bet more heavily on battery electric vehicles than any traditional automaker. After committing over $80 billion to developing BEVs, as well as paying well over $30 billion in diesel gate fines, VW desperately needs its EV strategy to pay off. If it fails, the company will be permanently crippled. But after spending nearly a week in the ID4, I'd say VW's electric car strategy is off to a good start. Some will quibble that the ID4's efficiency doesn't match Tesla or that its dashboard screen pales in comparison. And that's true, but the average motorist probably will not notice. And the ID4 is very much aimed at the average motorist, not EV advocates. This is a wide, roomy vehicle that's much more suited to American tastes than European ones. It has the softest riding and lightest steering VW that we've ever driven, which are attributes that work best in the American market. VW allows you to increase the steering effort and get more responsive acceleration and more aggressive regen braking by using different settings on the center screen. But even with everything in sport mode, this is not a hard-edged vehicle. Acceleration is simply adequate, not the breathtaking blast out of the blocks that other EVs offer. Instead, this is a car that cruises quietly down the highway, provides very good front and rear seat room, and has plenty of luggage space for most everyday needs. Even the styling is soft and flowing, instead of the hard horizontal lines that VW uses on the rest of its lineup. So not only is it aimed at the average motorist, it also seems to be aimed at customers who never bought a Volkswagen before. One closing observation, when you put it in park and turn the engine off, most vehicles will continue to play the radio until you open the driver's door. In the ID4, you don't turn the engine off. You simply put it in park. And the radio will continue to play even after you open the driver's door. It will not turn off until you get out of the driver's seat, which is a nice touch that no other automaker offers. It's also the kind of satisfying feature that will endear the ID4 to people who are trying out an electric car for the first time. Creating replicas of cars with Lego pieces is nothing new, but now it's the turn for the Lamborghini Sian. This life-size replica built to exact dimensions features more than 400,000 pieces with 154 different types of Legos, including 20 that were molded specifically for this project. It weighs 2,200 kilograms, that's over 4,850 pounds, and it was created by a team of 15 people who took 8,600 
and 60 hours to develop and assemble the car. It's also the first large-scale model from LEGO to have paintbrush effect, UV color coding, which was applied by Lamborghini's own paint shop. It's pretty cool, and if you want a better look, you can take a virtual tour of it by following the link in the transcript or the description box. And that wraps up this week's Worth of Reports. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.